Hey guys, it's May May, and we are on our fifth of five sympathy cards, and today's card is white. It's all white, working with one color. I think that solid white sympathy cards are so pretty, but I wanna show you the tips and tricks to make them really pop. So to start these sympathy cards, I've taken some eight and a half by 11 cardstock, and I've cut it down to four by five and a quarter. I actually cut two sheets down, so I got eight pieces of cardstock, and that's what I was looking for. So I'm gonna move my trimmer out of the way and show you our next step in our white sympathy cards. So you can see I have my die cut machine out and these dies, look how beautiful these are. I think they make a beautiful background and they'll be perfect for the cards we're doing today. So these pieces that I cut are exactly the same size as this die. Let me show you, they're exactly the same. So here's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take this die with the cut side down on the paper, like so, and I'm gonna t just line them up exactly on my surface there. And I'm gonna take some purple tape and wrap around to hold this in place. And this purple tape, even though it's purple tape and it's low tack, I put it onto like my jeans to get some of the lint off my jeans to make it a little less tacky. But this will hold this in place for me so I can cut it. And now I'm using my um, freestyle machine. So I'm gonna lay this face up with my die cut plate on top and run this through my die cutting machine. So here is my die completely cut. I'm gonna flip this over and let as many of those fall out as will. And a lot of them will fall out. These are kind of cute. You might want to keep those and use them for something else. They're very neat looking. What doesn't fall out, I'll use my little pokey tool and just go through and poke them out. These are kind of delicate. This um, lattice is going to be a delicate piece on your card, okay? So you want to be careful with it. And now what I'm going to do is just release it from the die itself very carefully, because like I said, it's very delicate. This tape is probably gonna be cut and stick to the back in some places, but that's not gonna matter. See like there, I'm not gonna stress about that. You're not gonna see it, but look how gorgeous this is. Now I wanna cut two of this one, okay? And I'm gonna cut two of this other pattern that's like a chicken wire pattern. I'm gonna cut two of each of them and I'll show you how we're gonna use them. So I learned something that makes life easier. Let me show you this. I'm gonna turn this over so you can see what I'm doing. Instead of wrapping this around four corners, if you will put it at the very edge of your die like that, and then just wrap this around to the front, you're just catching the edge there. It's not gonna move and you don't have to fight it or worry about it being on the back of the card. So again, I'm gonna catch it on the edge and run that around to the front. So very little is left on the card itself. And then place this down and run it through the machine. And if you do it that way, you can see you pick up this corner and most of it then is on the front and very little on the back. I like that idea, just doing the little corner. It's not gonna go anywhere. You're just putting that there to kind of hold it in place while you run it through anyway. All right, so I've got one more to cut. Now, keeping in the theme with our all white sympathy cards, I wanna show you. These are some embossing folders that will also add texture. This is a floral one, and this one has a tree, and I think this is so pretty and so simple. And all you do here is take a piece of your cardstock, just like you did with your die. It's the same size, and you're gonna place this inside. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna be mindful of where my pattern is gonna lay um, on the card. So as you can see there, um, some of it's gonna hang off the bottom, but I would rather this hang off the bottom than the flower hang off the top. So I'm mindful of where I place it. So I've got that there and then I place this down and now I'll run this through my machine. And that gives me one gorgeously embossed piece there. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my other folder. So this is my tree, which by the way, I can use on either side. This is the embossed side. This is the D-ball side. You see, I still have the texture. I think it's beautiful. So I have both of those ready. I'm gonna put those aside. Now we're gonna go back to those pieces we cut earlier, the little die cut pieces. And why did I cut two? Okay, I want this card to have a little dimension, but the issue is if I put one of these down, it doesn't have that much dimension on it. So I want to make it two sheets thick. And if I wanted to try to do this with foam, it would be very hard to put foam all around this little piece. So what I'm gonna do is glue these guys together to make them the thickness of two sheets of paper. So I'll just come here and starting at the top, I'm gonna place glue around and you don't have to glue every bit of it. You just have to glue in sections here, just dropping glue and I'm just being very sporadic with it. So just dropping glue around and then we'll just put them on top of each other. And one thing I did notice is my die cut thicker at the bottom than at the top. So I'm gonna make sure I lay them on top of each other the way they will line up. 
and you'll see what I mean. Let me get this laid down and I can point it out to you. So now I'm just squishing glue all over my fingers. <laughs> you do wanna be careful when you're making cards in this solid white that you don't have really messy fingers because it will pick up everywhere. So you see that and now it's thicker, see that? And at the bottom, you can see that my um, die cut let me a little bit bigger piece down here than at the top. That's okay, I can trim that if I need to. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing with my other piece and just glue this together. Now, I know you're gonna be like, oh, that's a lot of glue in and all. There are products that you can get that are like the little um, adhesive sheets that you can run through your die machine with your die. So if you have that, feel free to use it. I just use my glue. I just tap it on here and there. You can be very specific if you want. I'm typically not, because it'll catch where it catches. So now you can see I have these two pieces that are thicker. I also use 110 pound cardstock to make that really thick. Now you do have to really put that through your embossing machine because 110 plus all your sandwich and your little die is a very thick piece to go through. All right, let's make some card bases. So I'm taking two pieces of eight and a half by 11 and cutting them in half at four and a quarter, and this will get me four card bases. So now I'm just gonna score these in half at five and a half, and go ahead and fold them over while I'm at it. Push that into the corner there, and then crease this down. So there's one card base, I need three more. Now for my first two cards, I'm gonna be using my little embossed pieces. And see how we've cut it in so it doesn't go all the way to the edge. I think this is beautiful. And I have this embossing on top as well. And then for this one, it's the same thing. The card doesn't go all the way to the edge and have that beautiful embossing. So what I wanna do here is I wanna use foam tape. And the reason for this is I wanna work with light and shadows. So when you're using the all white like this, it's a good idea to use your foam tape to get some dimension on the card. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm gonna place one piece on one edge, like so. And then the other piece on the other edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and run a piece here as well. Then I'm just gonna remove the backer off of these guys and put it down onto my card front. So the reason for this, light and shadow. By giving it this lift, we're kind of we're gonna give it a shadow around the edge as well as the shadow from our embossing piece. So now I'm gonna place this down on my card and use that border edge to my advantage. So you'll see here, and I'll move my hand out of the way so you'll see. See how I got light and shadow on the side as well as light and shadow at the top. White cards are hard to film, y'all. But you can see how that dimension adds a little, another step there. So I'm gonna do that with my other piece. Now all these two pieces need are sentiments. Okay, let's work on the other two. I'm gonna do them very much the same, except without foam tape, right? I'm gonna glue these directly down to the card, just like so, and look how pretty that's gonna be, all that shadow. The more movement, the more shadow you get, and it's so pretty. And I'll just put this one directly down onto the front. Try to center it up pretty good. Clean hands with this white. I'm sure I'm gonna have a fingerprint somewhere. I know me. <laughs> but that is so pretty. And look by adding that second one, look at the dimension we get. It's so gorgeous. Let me crease this down again now that I've opened it out flat. So it'll lay in that beautiful, we're not done. Still pretty though, right? Let's do the other one. Let me show you this. If you're nervous about getting fingerprints on it, just lay another piece of cardstock down or a piece of parchment or something you might have in your craft room that you don't mind rubbing your hand over, and that'll help to glue everything down without having to rub your hands all over your white card. All right, so let's crease this one back down again. Now let's work on the sentiments. So as you know, this is the stamp set that we are focusing on for this week for this five-part series, and today we're gonna to be making these sympathy cards. Now they could totally be thinking of you cards as well, but these are gonna be sympathy cards. And let me show you what I'm gonna do here. You probably know, because it's kind of how I've treated these all along. These little strips that I have here are four inches by one inch. So I'm gonna stamp sympathy on two of them. I wanna make sure that's not something on my card. On two of them, I'm gonna stamp to one side like this. So there's one, let's do another one. And then on the other two, I'm gonna stamp in the center. 
I have to apologize. You probably can hear a lawnmower running. I've never had that happen in this location, but we do have a lawnmower outside. Someone is cutting the grass. So if you can hear it, I apologize. So on these two cards, I'm going to glue these directly down. I have got enough dimension um, for the mailing of these. If I was going to hand deliver these, I would go ahead and pop this up on foam as well. But since these could be mailed cards, I'm going to just glue this directly down to keep the thickness down. And what I did was I chose a spot between the die that I thought would be the best place to put this. Now, oh, I forgot to stamp one more thing. I should have done this before I put them down. The lawnmower threw me all. It got me all confused. All right, I'm going to add the word heartfelt right here. So let's hope this goes well, considering that I'm having to stamp it after it's down. It was fine, but I'm going to go ahead and stamp the other one beforehand. But what you do with these, because I cut these little strips long enough to go all the way across the card, then you just decide, do they go top, middle, bottom, what have you, and just glue them down. And for this one, I think it would be pretty lower. So I'm just gonna line that up here at the bottom. And that is a stunningly beautiful, simple sympathy card. And the thickness of the paper still adds to the um, light and the shadows, and they are gorgeous. So all white there, and let me show you what we do with the other two. Now these I'm gonna do a little bit different. You would have noticed that I stamped Sympathy lower. Let me do the um, heartfelt on these as well. I totally forgot. So these are gonna get glued to the lower third here at the bottom of the card. But I'm gonna add another little embellishment to these. So using another one of the pieces I went ahead and cut down when we got started, this is my hydrangea punch. I love this punch. I'm gonna put this in here like this, and I'm gonna punch two sets of these. Now I'm gonna assemble. Let me show you what I do. I like to take them in the palm of my hand and with the bead on the end of my pokey tool, I like to just kind of roll that center a little bit just to get those petals to lift. So I'm gonna do that before I assemble the flower. I'm gonna do that to every petal. And you have, with that punch, you have five petals for each flower. Now, starting with this one, I'm gonna add some glue to the center and then take the next largest size and offsetting it, I'm gonna glue it down to the middle. And the reason you offset it is you see all your petals that way. You don't wanna line your petals directly up on top of each other. And then you go to the next size down and add it to the middle, also offsetting it so that our petals and the light and the shadow will play. And then another one. and then our last petal. You can use your pokey tool to kind of help you get it in place, but see how that white flower works with the light and the shadows as well? Love it, let's make another one. Then from this same scrap of paper, I'm gonna cut some leaf shapes. And all leaf shapes are is two curves to a point. So you see that? That's all you need for a leaf shape. I'm just gonna cut several of these. And you might have a punch or a die you can do this with, but I thought if you didn't, I'd show you an alternative because not everybody has, you know, that many tools or fancy tools. And so sometimes I like to show you different ways. Do I have a leaf punch? I do. Is it near me? No. So sometimes this is just because I'm a lazy crafter. I've told y'all before, I confessed it recently, right? I confessed it in a video recently. So I'm just gonna cut these like so. I think I'm gonna give myself three for each card. Now I'm just gonna place one flower, gluing it with one dot of glue, just like so. Just one there, and then I'm gonna place one on the other side. And then I'm just gonna place some leaves around it into the back. So a little glue, and then I'll just feed it underneath. And lastly, I'm gonna place a little pearl. These are little sticky back pearls right in the middle of the flower. Place another one here. Now these pearls are not exactly white and I would use solid white if I had them, but these are a little bit creamy. Now I'm just gonna lift these petals because the more lift, the more light and shadow we get. So just reaching underneath and lift your petals back up and give it a little bit of dimension. 
So you see how the light changes whenever I did the little lifting to them? That's the trick with the solid white is the dimension because it gets you the shadow. So there's two of our sympathy cards that we made today. Let's bring the other two over. So, so there you go, guys. Two different styles of cards done virtually the same way using dies and our embossing folders. Here's what you want to remember, and you can tell by looking at these. The more dimension in the solid white, the more um, interest or the more shadow you get. So you can see here how much more shadow we have from the dies versus the embossing folder. So if you've never done this before, I challenge you to play with it. It's, it's very intimidating. Honestly, the solid color on solid color is very intimidating. And you don't have to do this with just white. I challenge you to do it with black. I challenge you to do it with craft. It's beautiful done in craft because craft plays with the shadows really well too. So I challenge you to try it in different colors and see what you get. Hey, thanks so much for being with me on this five part series. This is our last video. I really enjoyed it. It's been fun to play with the stamp set and also make all these cards. Um, if you make anything I've inspired you to make, these cards or anything else, share it with me on my customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. Don't forget to subscribe. I love having our new subscribers and we have a lot of new folks around here and I'm really, I'm really grateful for that and I appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel. Have a great one and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.